So I was down at the county jail and I got asked by another bail bondsman, what was the one thing I hated most about being a bail bondsman? And the answer was pretty easy. It's the stupidity of the criminals that we work with on a regular basis. He kind of nodded and agreed. Which brings us to the sponsor of this video, which is stupidity. It's free and all around us, except it's very expensive to use. So here is your daily dose of stupidity. So three months ago, I got a phone call to go bond this guy out in the middle of the night. Seems that he was selling stuff directly to an undercover female sheriff's deputy that he wasn't supposed to be selling to anyone. Well, these things happen, right? So let's get you out of jail. Let's get you home. The lesson here is don't sell things you're not supposed to sell or at least don't sell them directly to undercover cops. Right? Right. So send him on his way. And I'm hoping, hey, he'll have a court date in 60 days. This will get pled out. He'll be done. No, that's not what happened. Four days later, I get another phone call from him. He's locked back up. Well, now I'm just curious. And I head on down to the jail. And he's been arrested again for selling things again to somebody he's not supposed to be selling to. But this is the kicker. He sold to the exact same undercover female sheriff's deputy that he sold to last time. What the hell happened, bro? What did you not get? She's a cop. And he explained exactly what happened. He said, you know, listen, I sold to her the first time and I got arrested. But then I saw her again and she explained that she had to arrest me because she was on the clock. But now she was off the clock and she's always wanted to try in her personal life what I was selling. Could I sell her any more? And that it was fine because she's off the clock now. That was a definite palm to forehead moment because the sheriff's deputy was not off duty. She was completely on the clock. And this guy was so incredibly stupid that he sold to the exact same undercover officer for the second time. So I just kind of let him know. I'm like, listen, okay? Um, God has kind of blessed you with a smooth brain. And maybe um, this occupation that you've chosen, it's not the one for you. You should actually find another occupation. Let's go ahead and get you out of jail. Your attorney's probably going to combine both of these charges and uh, you can sort that out with the cops. Pay me my money, go to your house. Not a problem. Hoping to God I never hear from this guy again. Yeah, three days later, he's back in jail. This time, not for selling. He's in jail for possession. So now I've got to know. Like, this is a soap opera. I'm 100% invested. I go down to the jail. I bond him out. And I'm like, dude, what, what is the story? What gives? Three times? Tell me it wasn't the same one. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's just the same girl but there's like some circumstance behind it I was like please God tell me the circumstance I need to hear this and he explains that he did not try to sell anything to her that he recognized that she was an undercover police officer instead what he did is he asked her out on a date because he thought she was really cute and she agreed to the date and they set it up and what was going to happen is is she was going to get off work at the sheriff's department and he would meet her at the sheriff's department and then they would go have a good time so when he showed up at the sheriff's department at the end of her shift hashtag it wasn't the end of her shift and picked her up they just searched him and he was in possession so they arrested him again i'm like let me get this straight you asked out the sheriff's deputy that busted you twice on a date and then for your third meeting voluntarily walked into a sheriff's department to pick her up while you were carrying contraband that you were not supposed to have you are a special kind of stupid but the hell else am i gonna do this is what we call repeat business okay he's satisfied i'm paid let's keep this gravy train going but i try to do him a favor and tell him Dude, just, just stop talking to this person. Now, this story may strike you as one where you're like, oh, wow, he was really stupid. I'm not sure most criminals are like that. And I'm here to refute that entire theory, that whole argument. Take it, ball it up, throw it the hell away. Because four nights ago, I went out looking for a guy who didn't show up for his court date. And I do the obvious thing. I go to his address of record, which is his mom's house. And house is being a generous term. It's a trailer in a trailer park. And I knock on the door. I explain to his mom. I'm like, listen, 
I'm the bail bondsman for your son. We got him out of jail. Seems there's been a little hiccup. He's missed his court date. I'm trying to catch up with him, see if we can get everything straightened out. And she lights in on me. Screw me, she ain't helping me. Her son's her son. She'll never rat, rat him out. A junkie's a junkie and you can always buy a junkie, okay? That's just the way the world works. And this woman is clearly a junkie. So I didn't have any cash on me. But a couple weeks ago, I got a present, which was a $50 Applebee's gift card. I took my girlfriend out to Applebee's, and we ate, and I used a $50 gift card. I have no idea how much money's left on it. I'm sure there's a couple of bucks, but I did have an Applebee's gift card in my pocket. So I pulled out the Applebee's gift card from my wallet. I was like, listen, I have no idea how much money is on the Applebee's gift card, but you know, if you would help me out in finding your son, I'd give you whatever money is left on the gift card. And she snatched the card out of my hand and told me that her son was three trailers down at his new girlfriend's house. Not a house, it's a trailer, but whatever. We're not gonna argue this point, thank you. So, me and my brother, we pack up our stuff and we head three trailers down. How convenient, we're already here. It's like repeat stops, high efficiency. And from the inside of the house, we hear the one thing that you never want to hear as a bail bondsman, which is hide, 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 and then silence. And then she answers the door. Well, the whole hide, hide, hide thing means they know you're coming. They know it's you. They're hiding. They're getting ready. Are they gonna shoot you? Are they gonna stab you? Is this a trap? Are you walking into something? That's why we work in teams. So when the girlfriend answers the door, I look at her and I explain the situation. I'm like, listen, my name's James. I'm a bail bondsman. From what I understand, you have a new boyfriend. He's missed a court date. I would love the chance to speak with him and work this out. And she says, He's not here. Huh, he's not here. Really? Allow me to put on my super duper sleuther hat. And I ask her the greatest trick question of all time. Well, if he's not here, you wouldn't mind us just looking around to confirm that, would you? And like an idiot, remember it's not just the criminals that are idiots, they also hang out with idiots. But like an idiot, she says, no, come on in. But when you're done, get the fuck out. Okay. Now I have permission to enter your domicile. This just got bad for you. By the way, hashtag for anybody out there, don't let people into your house, okay? Whether they're cops or bail bondsmen or ax murderers, just don't let people into your house. It's better that way. But me and my brother, we step into the house. Now, there's a pattern in which we search houses and usually what happens is, is he goes left and I go right. We're not so worried about this confrontation that we're gonna stack up on each other and tactically take the house. That's not the kind of situation this is. We're just your friendly neighborhood bail bondsman. And as he goes left and I start to go right, she stops me, grabs my arm, puts her finger in my face and says, my baby's sleeping in the master bedroom and you better damn well not go in there or there'll be hell to pay. Now, I look at her and I go, yes ma'am, I will not go in to your master bedroom and I look at my brother and he understands completely what's going on and makes a beeline for the master bedroom because she told me not him and she starts to go after him I'm like oh wait 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 a second you should probably stay here with me while he goes and does that I don't want you to get tased and she's like tase he ain't gonna fucking tase me he ain't got the balls to tase me and I'm like uh uh Mm, minor point, while I would never disrespect a mother in her own home and open up the room in which the baby is sleeping, um, my brother is not me and has no such respect for you. But as far as you not being tased, my brother would tase the Lord Jesus Christ on the underside of his holy nutsack just to see the irony of the Son of God riding the lightning. So yes, he will tase you, you should stay here. Her mind is super busy trying to figure out what the hell I just said and how Jesus, tasers, and balls came into the same sentence. But she pretty much got it right at about the time that my brother decided to very quietly and very gingerly, with the greatest of respect to everyone in the household, boot the master bedroom door open. That did not wake up the baby, but the door was open and my brother called me over. So I looked at her, I was like, you should probably stay right here. And I walked over there. And sure enough, inside the master bedroom, I see three things. There is a queen size mattress directly on the floor. 
no danger of anybody hiding under that. I look over and I see a crib with a baby in it. The baby still sound asleep, but underneath the crib is a man. And because this man is about 6'2 or 6'3 and weighing in at almost 300 pounds, he is not under the crib all the way. The only thing that is under the crib is his head and his shoulders. And he's being perfectly quiet and perfectly still. Huh. Now listen, I don't want to fight with a gigantic motherfucker that's 6'2. It's not my department. I'm 5'8", weigh 130 pounds. I might get hurt. So what my brother and I decide to do is we're going to handcuff his ankles together, which was more difficult than you would think because it's hard to do that on fat people. But we made it work because we had four sets of handcuffs. And then using the handcuffs that were on his ankles, we drug him out from underneath the crib and we are expecting a fight. We're expecting we're gonna have to tase this guy or worse because he's a big guy. But as we pull him out, he just brings his hands over his face and starts saying, you can't see me, I'm invisible. You can't see me. I had absolutely no idea what to do. This is a very special kind of stupid. I don't know what drug he's on, but I bet it's expensive, okay? So we drag him out of the master bedroom and into the hallway, stand him up and start transitioning handcuffs from his legs to his hands. He's not fighting us. He's literally in the hallway up against the wall screaming that we can't see him. He's invisible. And we're having to tear his hands away from his face to handcuff him behind his back. He's not trying to fight us. He's trying to fight to stay invisible. And listen, I'm a parent. I raise twin boys. There are certain things that I notice right off the bat. And what I noticed was that his screaming completely woke up the baby. And whenever I glanced at the baby, it was not hard to tell that that baby's diaper had not been changed in a long, long time. The diaper was completely swollen and piss was leaking out onto the dirty bed sheets that the child was sleeping on, which infuriated me and my brother. I've actually never seen my brother's face turn that red that quickly as when he saw that, but not my circus, not my clowns. And we're carrying him out and the girl more or less makes a smart ass comment. I didn't actually hear what she said, but my brother stopped short, looked at her and said, you know what, instead of being a fucking idiot and hanging out with this guy, why don't you go in there and change the diaper for your fucking kid? And she just lit into my brother. Don't tell me what to do with my life. I'm not gonna change his fucking diaper. I ain't even got fucking diapers. I ain't had diapers in two fucking days. I'll change his diaper whenever I goddamn get around to it. It's one of those things that like, I'm really hoping that my brother is not about to snap. I mean, I'm about to snap, but I'm really hoping my brother's not about to snap. But he doesn't, and we walk out. It's dark, it is night outside, and I can still see that my brother has a red face. We get the guy loaded into the car, and he is still insistent that he is invisible. And how did we find him? How did you find me? I'm invisible. When we get to the jail with him, and we walk into the actual receiving area where he's gonna be searched by deputies, they ask his name. And before we can give his name, he begins screaming again that he's invisible. The sheriff's deputy in receiving just looks at me and goes, oh, another one of these. Like he's seen this shit before, okay? Like this is common fucking occurrence at the jail, you know? People just walk in thinking they're invisible. That is the level of stupidity that I see every day demonstrated by the criminals that are in our criminal justice system. So whenever he asks me what I hate most about being a bail bondsman, it's that. So then he asked me like, well, how would you like it to be? And I had to think for about two seconds. And then I answered him. You know, in Stockholm, Sweden, they had some people that wanted to rob a cash depot. And so what they did is they got together a whole freaking team. They stole a helicopter. They had a guy that knew how to fly a helicopter. And with heavy weapons, they went into the cash depot, landed on the roof and robbed the place clean. And when the police responded, the police realized, you know what, as a, as a beat cop in Stockholm, Sweden, I'm probably not prepared to take on automatic weapon, aircraft wielding bad guys. We're probably gonna set up a perimeter and wait on the SWAT team to get here. Hashtag SWAT team couldn't get there in time because they were done and loading up the helicopter to leave with all the fucking money that the place had, okay? Like 100% success rate here. And then they leave and the Swedish police are just like, fuck, 
what do we do? And then one of them has the brilliant idea to call the police helicopter. So they do, and all the police respond to their helicopter, except apparently they forgot to lock up the police helicopter because somebody had managed to get to it and leave a package that was labeled bomb. So now the Stockholm Swedish police are too fucking scared to fly their own helicopter to chase the bad guys that stole another helicopter. So the bad guys that just robbed the cash depot got away with all the fucking money. That's some fucking ingenious shit. That's the criminals I wish we had. As America, I wish that I could be like, you know what? We got the best fucking criminals. And he's like, well, you'd be out of business. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have a business as bail bondsmen. I was like, no, we absolutely would. Those criminals got caught two days later. We still have a job. You can get smart fucking criminals and we'll still be employed. And at least that way we're not bonding out idiots. And then it occurred to me, America does have the best criminals in the world, bar none. We just call them politicians. So I guess I can't be that mad. So I will leave you with this question to answer in the comments. Your local county sheriff's deputy, what do you think his reaction would be if some asshole landed on your local bank with a helicopter robbing it and tried to escape in the bank? Do you think your local county sheriff's deputy is gonna be like, ah shucks boys, I think they're getting away. Or do you think he's going to calmly get out of his cruiser, walk to the trunk, pull out his AR, the entire bag of magazines, post up on the side of his squad car, and just start unloading accurate small arms fire at the bad guys. And before you bring that weak ass argument of like, you're not allowed to shoot at aircraft, I'm willing to bet you that in 99.9% .9 of podunk counties throughout America, in the sheriff's department's standard operating procedure, it does not say that you cannot shoot at helicopter bank robbers. I think they've completely fucking skipped over that entire chapter. And I'm willing to bet that the sheriff's deputy is going to go, you know what? There's not a rule against it. <laughs> Therefore, it's allowed. And they're probably going to do this while they're wearing a sweatshirt from the fat electrician that says it's never a war crime the first time. Just, you know, because that's the mentality of most sheriff's officers. But no, tell me, tell me how your sheriff's officers would handle that. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. The best way to support the channel is like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified when there's another video. I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.